All right, so I'll just quickly go through these two figures that we all know in the Bible. In the Mount of Transfiguration, it says Jesus took Peter, James, and John, led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining, exceeding white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten. And Elijah appeared to him, them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. You all know what? This, you're familiar with this portion of scripture, right? So why Elijah and Moses? Some of you may have looked at this. This is what, uh, like a summary of the commentary said. Moses and Elijah served God extra as extraordinary leaders, but both of their ministries ended prematurely. God told Moses to speak to a rock so it would yield water. In his anger, Moses struck the rock twice. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first heard that, I said, well, that doesn't seem like such a big deal. <laughs> Anybody else? Like, wow, like, really? That's going to keep him out of the promised land? Like, just because he got angry? Well, that's what the enemy tries to do. He'll always throw these lures out in front of you and try to get you to take the bait. But I have to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and recognize when it's that lure. So he struck the rock twice, and because Moses did not obey, God told Moses and Aaron they would not enter the promised land. And soon thereafter, Joshua assumed the leadership over God's people. Elijah, on the other hand, Condemned the worship of Baal, called down fire from heaven, and killed Baal's prophets. Like, that's quite an amazing scene, isn't it, in 1 Kings 18? Jezebel was furious, no surprise, vowed to kill Elijah, and he fled into the wilderness in fear for his life, and even prayed to God to take his life. And then in 2 Kings, his protege that he had been developing, he was being mentored, Elisha took over with Elijah's mantle. Now, they didn't fail, right? They didn't fail, but they were really high-level leaders in the kingdom. And the expectation of a high-level leader in the kingdom is higher than it would be for someone else. And not everybody likes this. I'm, I'm saying it to you to, to be sober-minded that it, it's something we should embrace, okay? It's something we should embrace, that we can run the race to win, it says, every runner runs in the race, but only one wins. Run to win. And this is the best way to look at your faith and to look at the way you should live your life is that, no, I'm not going to be perfect. I'll never be Michael Jordan in basketball, but I'll be the best Peter Roselli, whatever that means. And there are things I can do to stop that. Neither one of these men failed, but their ministries, I believe, this is just, again, my own view of how I've been looking at this, they could have gone longer except for going down the wrong gate. And, and like, a, man, the, the bar just gets set much higher, right? I mean, Jezebel was working some pretty big witchcraft over, over Elijah. And he had a moment of weakness. Did that disqualify him? Well, I, it didn't end so bad. He got taken out on a chariot of fire. So it's not like God didn't call both of them back to meet with Jesus. They weren't in some jail cell somewhere. But why not aim for the highest level that we can get to? Meaning, not, not prestige in the world's eyes, but to be the most effective for God while we're here. That's what this is all about. It's just moving from glory to glory. And he quoted it, right? Dutch Sheets, when he was talking about glory to glory, higher level. It's like every year that goes by, we can rightly expect that we're going to be more like Jesus than we were the year before. If we apply these principles, that's how it works. And then all of a sudden, you don't want to go back to the old way of doing things. You guys Okay. Almost done. Moses and Elijah had unique departures from the earth. Moses died and was buried by God. <laughs> wow. Buried by God in an unknown place in Deuteronomy 34. Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, 2 Kings. Their reappearance foretells Jesus as the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. So the law was represented by Moses. The prophets were represented by Elijah. So clearly they didn't lose status with God because they didn't end well, we could say. But what we want is a strong finishing anointing. That's something we can all ask for. Lord, it doesn't matter what I did in the past. I don't know. The start doesn't matter as much as the finish. And, and the longer I'm serving you, the more I should be able to translate the truth into my actions and to see other people's lives transform for the kingdom. Amen? All of us. And when we work together, oh, my God, the, the, the leverage there is unbelievable, right? And then it says, and it points to the coming resurrection. Hmm. So the fact that Elijah was taken up into heaven is a sign that Jesus is going to ascend and bring the blood to the mercy seat and sit down at the right hand of the Father. 
Here comes Isaac Petrie again. Now, just for those of you that might be a little skeptical, in Luke chapter 1, we see this scene with Mary. It says, the angel said to Mary, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. How many here could say you found favor with God? All right, I'll take that one. She was just a teenager, right? And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And like, she's probably scratching her head right now going, well, I don't know about that. Like, how's that going to happen? He will be great, your son, and he will be called the son of the most high God. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I don't know a man? That's a legitimate question, isn't it? She's a teenager. She wasn't sitting there praying, I want to be the mother of the son of God. One day, Gabriel came knocking and had a message from God. And Jesus says, okay, well, I'm not kicking you out yet, but how's it going to work? And he explains it. And then the answer she gives in verse 38 is, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Wow. Not my will, but your will be done. I'm going to be a pregnant teenager, single, and the death penalty is, is what we do here in this culture. So how are you going to get me out of that one? Only took him four verses to convince her, yep, this bears witness. Let's roll. I'll do it. But right in that same chapter, a little earlier in verse 13, the angel said to Zacharias, don't be afraid, for come on, what? Your prayer. prayer. Oh, so they were praying. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Now, right there, that's different, because Mary wasn't praying for anything, and Zechariah was. And Zechariah says to the angel, how shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. Same question, sounds like. It sounds like the same question that Mary asked, but it's two different people. Mary was a teenager. He was a priest. He hadn't just been praying for this. He was a priest. Priests are held to higher standards. Shouldn't they be? Of course. So it doesn't end well. He gets a timeout for nine months. I mean, that's not the worst punishment in the world, but he couldn't, couldn't speak for nine months. But boy, when he opened his mouth, he prophesied over his son. You read that one. I'm going to end now. Thank you, Nate. It's getting a little predictable. Psalm 145 says, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Say amen. amen. Slow to anger and rich in love. Say amen. Aren't you glad he's gracious and compassionate? Slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. And then in Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he has removed our transgression from us. So listen, everything I'm talking about is not about trying to earn your way into favor with God. No. You're saved. You're in. Okay? Now it's, can I be more effective for you, Lord? And, and the way to be effective for you is to be a better husband, a better parent, a better person, employee on my job, or boss to, to the people who are working for you. There's, there's ways that you can transform me into your image every day. That was the verse that Dutch was quoting when he said, from glory to glory, it's 2 Corinthians 3.18. And in the NIV, it says, we are being transformed into the image of Christ with ever-increasing glory. So every time we do another lap, which is another year in the Jewish calendar, we're going higher. I want to burn that picture in, right? We're going higher. We get a status with the Lord that is servant, right? It's servant. We go down in order to go up. <laughs> we serve in order to gain favor and have authority, whatever that means for you. We're not trying to duplicate you to be somebody else. We're trying to find out who he made you to be. So you can grow into that.